AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and in this lesson I will talk about the anatomy of the arm. In this virtual dissection series I will explain the muscles, the arteries and the veins and the nerves as well as the bones of the arm. We will dissect this corpse virtually. We will remove one muscle then explain what's below then we will remove these the below structures and we will move on so on and so on until we reach the bone in human anatomy the arm is the upper limb of the body compromising regions between the glenohumeral joint up here and the elbow joint down there in common usage the arm extends to the hand it can be divided in the upper arm the brachium and the forearm the antebrachium right here and also to the hand the manus anatomically the shorter shoulder girdle right here with all the corresponding muscles is by the definition part of the arm the latin term brachium may refer to the both the arm as a whole or the upper arm on its own let's start by explaining the muscles of the arm the arm is divided by the fascial layer known as lateral and the medial intermuscular septa separating the muscles into two osteofascial compartments the anterior and the posterior compartment of the arm to explain you how this looks like we will make a horizontal section on our corpse in the height of the arm right here I will try to illustrate for you the medial and the lateral intermuscular septum of the humerus here you would have somewhere the medial intermuscular septum separating the triceps from the brachialis muscle and the biceps muscle and there is also here on the lateral side there should be a fascia set this part here that separates these compartments as well on the lateral side of the humerus. The fascia on both sides coming from the lateral and the medial side merges with the periosteum that is the outer layer of the bone. The compartments contain muscles which are innervated by the same nerves and perform the same action. So when we talk about the upper arm, there are two muscles that are considered to be partially in the arm as well. That is the deltoid muscle right here. And a brachioradialis muscle down there. The brachioradialis muscle starts indeed on the humerus here but it inserts on the radius on the forearm down there. This muscle that you see right here is the biceps brachii. The biceps brachii gets its blood from the brachial artery. The biceps is actually a two-headed muscle that lies on the upper arm between the shoulder and the elbow. Both heads arise on the scapula, which can be seen here. You can see here the long head coming from the scapula. And when a humerus is in the motion, the tendon of the long head, that's right here, is firmly in place in the intertubercular groove kept by the greater and the lesser tubercles and the overlying transverse humeral ligament. The short head comes here from the coracoid process. The most important functions of this muscle are to supinate the forearm and to flex the elbow. As I have said, this muscle gets its blood from the brachial artery and it is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve that comes from C5 and C6. If we remove our muscle, we will be able to see the artery and the nerve. Here is the musculocutaneous nerve 
and here is the brachial artery. If you look at it from here, you can see the brachial artery down there underneath our biceps. And here you can see that the brachial artery comes from the axillary artery. The axillary artery came from the subclavian artery, and the subclavian artery came from the brachiocephalic trunk. Down there is the aortic arch, right here. So now you know where this muscle gets its blood from. You can see here the nerve that I've mentioned, the musculocutaneous nerve. You can see it right here again that comes from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. And as I mentioned, it gets its roots from the C5 and C6. But let's get back to our full model for dissection. When we removed biceps, we were able to see two additional muscles. That is this muscle here, the brachialis, and one more muscle up there, this muscle here, that is the carcobrachialis. I will turn off now the biceps, and I will turn on the carcobrachialis and the brachialis muscle. Here are these two muscles. Let's start by explaining the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle has the same nerve as our biceps head, that's the musculocutaneous nerve. However, the blood supply is different. The blood supply here comes from the radial collateral artery. If we turn around and look from behind and we follow our radial collateral artery, you can see that it comes from the deep brachial artery, which by the way comes from the brachial artery anyway. So you can see how the blood gets to our brachialis muscle. The action of this muscle is the flexion at the elbow joint. The origin of this muscle is the anterior surface of the humerus, particularly the distal half of this bone. The insertion is the coronoid process and the tuberosity of ulna. The other muscle that we had in our dissection class was this one here, that is the carcobrachialis muscle. Now the carcobrachialis muscle gets its innervation also from the musculocutaneous nerve, just like the biceps muscle here. It gets its blood from the brachial artery as well. However, there is one difference. Since this muscle is a little bit higher, the musculocutaneous nerve brings the innervation from roots C5, C6, and C7. This muscle has its origin on the coracoid process of scapula, and it inserts on the medial side of the humerus, right here. The action of this muscle is to adduct the humerus and flex the arm at the glenohumeral joint, right here. These actions are very logical. If you look at it from the side view, if you look at it from the front view, you can see the adduction action here, and here you can understand the flexion. Now we can remove the brachialis muscle as well as the carcobrachialis muscle. The deltoid muscle I have explained in my lessons about the shoulder anatomy. So I will just remove the deltoid muscle as well. This is the pectoralis major that was also explained in my previous virtual dissection series. So I will remove that as well. Here we have the subscapularis, which I will remove, and this is the pectoralis minor that was also explained in the shoulder anatomy series. This is the carcobrachialis that I have just explained, and I will remove that muscle as well. If you look back, we are missing one muscle, and that is the triceps, which I accidentally removed. Here is the triceps brachii. You can see it's a quite a big muscle. The triceps brachii muscle is the large muscle on the back of the upper limb. It is principally responsible for the extension of the elbow joint, right here. It antagonizes the brachius muscle that we had previously. This muscle has three heads. 
that is the long head, the lateral head, and here should be illustrated the medial head, which is not illustrated. Very good. The long head has its origin on the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula right here. The lateral head has its origin above the radial sulcus right here, while the medial head is supposed to be a little bit lower right here, uh, below the radial sulcus. If we remove our muscle, we will be able to see here the deep brachial artery. That is the artery that supplies our muscle with blood. We will also be able to see this nerve right here. That is the radial nerve. And the radial nerve comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. Now we have virtually dissected the upper arm, removed all the muscles, explained the innervation, and the blood supply to these muscles. Now we will dissect the forearm the same way and the hand the same way. We will explain the most important nerves and arteries in this region. What we offer now is very simple. We offer you my very own animated lessons. We offer you my very own anatomy atlas and 3D models in one package. Lessons. We offer you my very own Anatomy Atlas.